All right, Chelsea fans, we are back with another special episode of the London Is Blue podcast, still at Cobham, doing our Chelsea DNA series, and we're really excited to bring a little different of a take. We've got Aaron Cuthbert here from the women's team. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Super excited. Uh, so we're going to continue on with what we've been doing. I uh, just going to know more about her as her playing career has progressed, bringing her to Chelsea, and then maybe how things have changed and how she views the club and everything like that. So... Uh, if we kick it off to, to early career, when did you start playing football? And uh, what was it like playing in Scotland? So, I could go so far back. No, I'm only joking. I'm <laughs> still young. But, like, I started playing football as, as much as I can remember I was able to walk. So it was always a part of me. I knew that I preferred going out and, and getting muddy at the pitch um, <laughs> than I did playing with Barbie dolls. And my, my family were very supportive, always told me to do what I wanted to do. My dad's a big football man, so he secretly loved it. My <laughs> mum was washing all my kit. Um, but yeah, then I joined a local boys team about five years old. So um, that was a bit of a, a freak incident, how that happened. I was on a, a, on a school trip in, in my very first year at primary school. I was on a school trip and um, the parent helper I was kicking the ball about, we were at a castle, and she said, oh, why don't you come along to the boys? I begged my dad when I got home, I was like, please, 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 can I go to football? He was like, we need to ask your mum, but secretly he was like, yeah, yeah, go on then, get in there. (laughs) Um, So we went to to the football, and I I was like, I surprised myself, because I was like, better than the boys, and I didn't really expect that in that age, you know, physic- physicality and strength isn't really a factor. So I was I was running rings around the boys and I got signed up that night. So I <laughs> absolutely loved it from then on in. I love it. So playing in Scotland, it sounds like we just play at castles. That's just the normal <laughs> thing. <laughs> Typical. Something like that, something like that. But no, yeah, um, it was it was pretty smooth going, but it, the transition from 7 to 11 aside was quite hard for me because at that time the coach didn't really see me able to cope with the, the demands of a living aside. You know, I didn't think I was physically strong enough or capable like the boys were. They, they felt that they were getting too strong. Um, so I actually moved club because I didn't really feel appreciated, which was a bit sad because I left all my friends and it was close to home. But um, the club I went to happily took me on um, and we ended up like winning every single trophy. So that was super, super sweet. <laughs> but um, yeah, it just shows you that females are still... Like, yeah, it's still a challenging time for females to try and prove people wrong uh, all the time. So when did you realize that you wanted to do it as a as a profession, as a professional? I always, from from when I could, could walk, I always wanted to play football when I was older. Whether it was going to be my job, I didn't know. Or whether I was going to play it just socially at the weekends after my mon- Monday to Friday 9 to 5 job. I didn't really know if what that was going to look like. But as I got older, I started seeing games on the TV. I watched Chelsea in an FA Cup final on BBC One. So that was the first exposure I've had of, of top women's football. And I thought, I want to be just like them. I want to play at Wembley. So, um, yeah, uh, from from me, I'm probably a bit different to the older girls, where, whereas they didn't think it was maybe a rea- reality to be a professional footballer. But I knew from an early age that I wanted to be a professional footballer and it was starting to become possible for me at that moment. So coming from Scotland, first Rangers in Glasgow City, how, you know, let's talk about those experiences. How did those uh, essentially prepare you to come play in the, uh, for the Chelsea women in the FAWSL? Yeah, it was good. Um, I made my debut for Rangers when I was 15 years old. So for me, that was a big step up. I felt Huge. I felt it was a real, I was being really challenged and um, I had really good managers, uh, Angie Hind and Michelle Barr at the time. I think they're coaching in America now, so it just shows you how good they are, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, yeah, they're very, very good, and I improved a lot under them. Um, and then I feel like I reached a kind of plateau with, with Rangers, and, I, you know, Glasgow City were the best club in the country, and they'd wanted me a year before, and I felt like I wasn't ready. I wanted to cement my place in senior football because I was still so young. Um and then I went to Glasgow City and absolutely loved it. Had a year and a half. Was really challenged at the start. Um, we had a coach, Eddie Willicky Black, for six months before he left and he was he just pushed me so hard and I feel like he was the main reason why I really excelled at the club. And then for a year then I had another year um where I was just cementing my place playing regular football, um, which I really, really enjoyed and I felt like I 
wanted to take the next step in my career. I felt like I wanted to make a, a, a job for me because I was going to university. I was training with uh, the Scotland squad in the morning at seven in the morning, so I had had. I'd have to get up at half five and I'd go straight to university and then straight to club training in the evening. And I knew it wasn't good for my body as well. You know, as much as they say quality, uh, it should be quality over quantity. And for me, I was doing far too much and I knew that I would have broke down. So the decision for me to go professional was an easy one just because... Being a professional, you get everything catered for you. Everything's monitored. You know, your recovery is just important as how much you train on the pitch. So uh, that was a big factor for me as well. But I'm still lucky enough that I get to continue my studies here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that is an unbelievably rigorous schedule, day in, day out. Um, You obviously talk about that last coach. Do you feel like you had a couple role models, especially you talk about some of the the older players on the team, that maybe looking up to players wasn't accept, accessible. Do you feel like you had a role model as you're growing up on the pitch and then maybe even someone else that was different off the pitch? I definitely had a couple of role models. Uh, there, was a, there was a female, uh, Julie Fleeton, the uh, high school scorer for Scotland. She, but she was from my local area, so I always seen her um, around and I'd kick a ball with her sometime and I'd be so starstruck. And then when I played for Rangers, she was at Celtic at the time, so I remember playing against her and thinking, oh, no, like she's, <laughs> she's going to make a fool of me, especially after I love her so much. I don't want her to ruin what I think of her. But then um, I went to Glasgow City, and she came. To, she was at Glasgow City as well. So to play with her was just incredible. And I have another player, Joe Love, um, a senior player in the Scotland squad. Um, I remember she used to play for Kilmarnock, which is also a local team to me. Um, and I used to just fangirl. I used to go to the games every single week after my game on a Saturday, their game on a Sunday. I used to go on at half time and kick the ball about on the pitch, hoping she'd, hoping she'd recognise me. And I went to a Scotland game and I got a signature and a photo. Now she's one of my teammates at Scotland. So it's it's an incredible story how it happens. And it just shows you that, you know, anything is, is, is capable and you can do anything you want to do if you put your mind to it. So what did you know about Chelsea? I know you said you mentioned you watched the FA Cup final with Chelsea, BBC One. What did you know about the club before you came here and made the decision to to move here? The Champions League win. I remember that very, very vividly, actually. I remember a couple of players that I'd really like to idolise. I think Cesc Fabregas and and Frank Lampard, the current manager as well. He (laughs) he, kind of... I try and play like him. You know, we're similar position... um, so I, I used to watch a lot of him when I was younger. Him and Steven Gerrard were, were very similar, late runs in the box, uh, uh, Frank's especially known for. So um, that's what I try and do. And I knew, I just knew Chelsea was a, was a big club. It was always Chelsea, Man United, Liverpool, you know, Real Madrid, Barcelona. It was always in that bracket. So to be offered by one of the powerhouses in Europe was, was a massive achievement for me and I think for my family as well because they've gave up so much for me. Yeah, so I mean, you get to Chelsea, you get to London. What what are your first impressions of the facilities, of the staff, of your teammates? I mean, kind of walk us through that those first couple months. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do I explain my first couple months? It's, <laughs> I always get asked this question. It's funny. Um, I actually came down to trial before because Emma. I don't think Emma takes on a lot of youth players, it was a bit of a transitional period at the time, she signed six players including Crystal Dunn so mm-hmm. I was a bit yeah. like overawed by oh she's signing me and then Crystal Dunn and then Ramona Backman, I was like oh Norwegian captain <laughs> Marin Mielder, do, do I fit in here, am I supposed to be here? So I came down and I was training and for a couple of days and by, t- by the time I got to the airport when I went to, ho- uh, to go home after training Emma had a contract waiting for me in my email so I knew straight away, like I had a couple of a couple of options at the time. But see, when you feel appreciated by someone and by a club, and who you feel like genuinely believe in you, then it's a no-brainer for me. So, um, I was down here as, as quick as I could come, to be honest. Um, um, and then my first couple of months were hard without my family. First time I've moved away from home. Didn't know how to work the washing machine, the tumble dryer. <laughs> what, how do you expect me to live? <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> so that was tough. Um, but my teammates, like, I remember the first couple of sessions. I was like, oh, well, this is a bit different. I don't have as much time in the ball. You know, they're physically faster, fitter, stronger, more technical. I said, oh, I'm going to have to adapt here. I'm going to have to learn learn fast because I'm not going to survive in this environment if I, you know, rest on my laurels of being at Chelsea. You know, I knew that I had to up my game as well. So. Um, 
settling in period took a couple of months just because of it went from you know the, the Scottish Women's Premier League up to the FAWSL you know the jump is very very high especially if, you know me moving down at 18 was was really really tough for me and it wasn't just all the on the field differences it was all the off field differences without my family I moved in with some of the girls in the team so that was nice but um, ultimately it was just so different because I didn't know anyone so you know you come to football and then you work with your colleagues and you go home and you live with your colleagues. So that's not a normal working scene, you know. So that I kind of struggled mentally to switch off. And football, I became inundated with football because it's so hard to meet friends, mm-hmm. you know, living living in London because you are so football orientated and you don't, you know, you only really have one day off. So you don't have the opportunity to meet to meet friends. But as I've obviously been at the club for nearly three years now, I'm starting to, starting to find my own <laughs> friends. And I think it's just important. As much as it is on uh, on the pitch to actually make friends off the pitch and make sure you do things, that's why I'm glad I'm continuing my studies as well. No, that, yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense. You know, like I can turn off work when I go home most of the time, but like you said, it's just it's you're immersed in it to that point. Um, let's go back to Emma. We had the pleasure of talking to Emma Hayes. Uh, it was a very laid back off the record, just time that we got to spend with her. Very impressive, very sharp uh, individual. Yep. <laughs> um, it looks like she has a very tight-knit relationship with her players. Um, so is that true? And then maybe just talk about her leadership and kind of how, the Emma you've gotten to know. <laughs> yeah, so my, my stomach, I've just <laughs> ate lunch. Um, I, th- I think she's very different from any manager I've ever worked with. She's Straight to the point, as as you've said, you know, if she wants something, she gets it, and it's it's great because Emma's really raised the standards that I've since I've been here. You know, in the last three years, the strides that the club's made in terms of facilities, you know, resources available to us has just went up another level, and it's making us really compete at the highest level in the Champions League. You know, we got to the semi final last year, and I think that's down to the work that Emma and our staff have actually done to improve us, and she's very. She she likes to communicate a lot with her players and I think that's important as a player because you want to know where you stand and I think it's important to know where you stand. Um, you know, if you're told you're not doing you're not doing well enough and you need to do better, it's nice to be told that rather than to be kept in the dark or, you know, keep doing what you're doing or just just a constant dialect I think is very important for a player and and it's very reassuring. So I think she's she's very good in that way and she's just continuing to push the standards of this club. So I mean when you initially came over here guys won the double in the first few months you were yeah. here uh, how has that you know quick success you know propelled you or kind of added additional maybe is it does it add pressure to succeed again at a higher level or is it something that you know just helps to set that standard I think the standard was set since I joined the club I was oh we've won trophies oh no the club don't are, are not willing to settle for that we want more so for us, like it was a real struggle last year when we we you know we three semi finals we we got put out of and the league was lost by ultimately the, the first couple of months of the season based on the points that we had dropped. So we were very disappointed, especially when the club have given so much to us that we weren't able to put in the performances just for a number of reasons as well. But um, we know the expectation that this club carries. We know it carries trophies. You know we know that we have to win. Or you know, we'll ultimately we're players and we're replaceable. If we're not performing, then we we don't play. And the, Emma's lucky enough that she's got a squad. It's not just eleven players. There's a a squad of us that every single one of us can play, and we're all pushing each other in training. So now you're kind of an established member of the team. Uh, you're playing week in and week out. I mean, talk to us about you know being you know are you, are you proud of what you've accomplished thus far, or are you looking to kind of work harder and improve some areas to kind of make this a more well-rounded experience? Yeah, I, d- I don't think I'm, I'm willing to settle. Um, okay. So when I came to Chelsea, I wasn't willing to settle for, oh, I play for Chelsea, that's me sorted for life, see you later. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I wish that was a reality, but it's not. So um, when I came to Chelsea, I wanted to, OK, let's try and make the squad of 18 because only 18 can make a match day squad. So I was like, right. I was I was face uh, FaceTiming, calling my dad every week. Hope I'm in the squad this week. Hope I've done enough for training. So it was a case of trying to make the squad, and then okay, I've made the squad of eighteen. Can I make the bench? Uh, can I come off as come on as a sub? Sorry, um, and then it was can I make an impact? Can I score a goal? Can I give Emma food for thought to think? Oh no, actually, let's give her a start. So that took a little bit of time, and it took a year and a half. But now. 
you know, I'm, I, I I played a lot of games last year. I think I played the, the most in the team. So um, probably if you if you do say established, but I'm not willing to settle for that. Like we achieved no trophies last year when we played, so maybe I should just not play. <laughs> but no, um, yeah. So I just want to I want to win trophies now. I think being an established member of the squad means nothing if you're not performing. You know, other players will play. I, th- I think I just need to keep raising my levels because raising your levels, you know, your individual standard raises the, the overall level of the team. And if the team become better, then we've got a better chance of winning trophies. So looking at Chelsea as a club and their commitment to the women's game, um, what are some things that you've seen in your time here that shows you uh, just the, the commitment and the, the, I guess, the support? Yeah, I think just... Every day, these facilities are just incredible, and the fact that we get access to this just just as much as the men do is is incredible. You know, we get provided our breakfast and our lunch, so that we're best prepared to go and perform in the pitch, which I think is incredible. Um, recently, we went to Israel yeah. and we met Roman Abramovich. That was pretty cool, um, <laughs> and it shows the the statement and intent from the club that we're not just willing to to rest and be happy where we are. We want to be a leading power and, and, and recently I've you've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of staff members added to, to the squad because we want to go up another level. You know, we, we got to the semi final of the Champions League last year. Next week next time we want to win it when we get in the Champions League. So, you know, we are a club that is pushing the standards in Europe for in a number of different ways. Is there something within your game in particular that you've identified this season that you really want to improve or you feel like helps take you individually yeah. to the next level? Oh, it's a difficult one, but I'd say goals. I, I think I scored 11, 10 or 11 last year, but um, I, want, I want more goals. But it, you could say that it's a difficult one because if you do loads of assists, it's the same as me. I celebrate an assist more than I score because I feel really awkward when I score. <laughs> Don't know how to celebrate, but... Everyone's looking at you, that's Exactly. Why. <laughs> I'm like, get away from me, everyone. I'll just jump on someone else. <laughs> Pretend they've scored. But, um, yeah, for, for me, probably goals is, is what I should add to, to my portfolio as well, I think. I get in good positions, so it's just a matter of, of putting them away and I'm doing we're doing a lot of finishing and a big focus on, on shooting this year. So I'm getting pr- plenty of opportunities in training, but of course it is different when you go to a game. So I think I just need exposure to them pressures of scoring. You know, it is a big club, so scoring for a big club is a big, big deal. So uh, I need to get myself used to that and, and get back to scoring ways, hopefully. So first game of the year, you guys are playing at Sanford Bridge. It's a it's a huge crowd. It's you know it's a little bit of a different experience. We were at Kings Meadow last year. Uh, how how did you take that in? And, and do you feel like this was another kind of step in the right direction for for the women's team? Yeah, I think it was a massive statement of intent from the club. You know, to to host the opening game um, against Tottenham, <laughs> which is you know it's oh, an yeah. even, even bigger deal, right? Um, at Stamford Bridge is just incredible and everything was set up perfectly. You know, we stayed at the same hotel that the men stay at. You know, every, all the facilities provided were the same, like the changing rooms were incredible and they'd done everything up to make it look nice, put the Chelsea women's bannering on and they really made us, uh, the day an absolute spectacle and, you know, my family said it was one of the best days of their life, you know, because <laughs> I've, t- I've took them to games before, but, you know, they have... I've not took them to games where they see the little girl on the pitch, you know. So that was that was pretty special to them. But I think the club are really putting a lot in for this, and hopefully we see more games at Stamford Bridge. Um, but we do like Kings Meadow; it's our fortress, and it's our we've got a good defensive record there. So we've got to keep that going. Um, but yeah, as, as the fan base grows, hopefully then then we start to get more games there. But it's it's amazing that we use the same facilities as the men. Are there any things that you like as you identify as you look at it? That what are the things that would make the game more accessible for more fans to be able to enjoy it? You know, are there things that you see as like blockers or limiters that prevent it from being as accessible as it should be? Uh, yeah, but I think now that the FA have now put in place an FA player, which is incredible. I think. Loads of countries across the world have now access to every single live game for free, which is incredible. We're signed up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, We've perfect. I'm it. signed up as well. <laughs> if I ever want to watch my rivals, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that that I think that's an incredible move and big statement from from the league because I think it's the first of its kind in any league. So it's it's very attractive for foreign players to want to come to the league as well, which is is very very smart. And you know, Chelsea TV have streamed a lot of our games last season as well, so. 
we're very grateful for that. But at the end of the day, it's it's still a constant battle. We need to try and market it to get it out there because people think the tickets are more expensive than they actually are. The, t- the tickets are very, very affordable for a family to come because just because, you know, the, the brand Chelsea is attached with it, the p- people might think the tickets are, are quite expensive, but they're actually very, very affordable and it's a great family day out. There's a lot of activities going on off the field as well. Right. I mean, we were there for the Everton match and the... All of you came over at the end of the match and like we're talking with fans and interacting and stuff and even the atmosphere, you know, during it was it was it was great. So yeah. obviously like we recommend if anyone has a chance to go over, <laughs> like it is well worth it to, to do that. Um, but as we kind of start to wrap up, you know, we want to bring in, you know, all of these experiences in your time at Chelsea and try to answer some questions. So we, we know that you're a relative newcomer to Chelsea. You know, we talked to Mason and Fakai who have been here for yeah. over 10 years. Um, but what do you think it means to be Chelsea? And, and what is it, Chelsea's DNA? What are some of the characteristics you've come to learn about this club? I think, you know, since I've been here, it's, it's fitted me quite well because it's just a lot of pr- pride. You know, when you put on the shirt, you feel a sense of pride for the badge. And, you you know, it's not the name on the back, it's the front and, and it's a crest. And you ultimately, you do everything to play for that and people remember the name on your back. So um, I, I definitely feel a lot of pride when I put on this shirt because it's a big responsibility and it's it's it comes with a, a heavy weighting, but something that I relish and, and enjoy. So hopefully it lasts for a long time. So how, how do you feel like you and the other members of the current squad are helping to kind of make that come alive today through the actions that you do kind of both on and off the field? Yeah, I think social. we do quite a lot of social media stuff in terms of trying to trying to grow our game as well and trying to engage with fans. You know, the stuff that you do at the end of the game is to engage with fans and, and bring them back. So um, we, we, we try and show pride from our in our badge and our performances, you know, 100%. I think that's the bare minimum that you ask from, from any players that you give 100% of your effort, you know. Technical ability, you can have a bad day or a good day, but at the end of the day, if you work as hard as you can, then then nobody can fault you. And I think that's something that I especially pride myself on. So, you know, I feel like you guys are kind of leading the way as a club in the women's game. How does it feel you know, to, to do that? And do you feel like there is a difference between the way that you guys are approaching things and, and maybe some of the other teams in the league? Or is there anything that other teams might be able to learn from the way that Chelsea is kind of going about the, the process? Yeah, I think a lot of people are, are are turning and now looking at Chelsea and saying, wow, they, they are serious about this. We need to catch up. But of course, we have a lot of financial resource, mm-hmm. you know, in comparison with, you know, maybe other clubs that aren't, linked to a, to a men's team as well, which is is difficult. So um, we understand that we're in a very pr- privileged position, but I think other clubs are now, you know, trying to trying to up their game as well. And I think we, as a club, are, are sharing some resources that we have. Not everything, you've got to keep some secrets. You know? <laughs> but sharing resources so that we can improve the, the women's game overall. And I think that's only going to be good for the league in the future and obviously for the England team, as much as I hate to say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, uh, it's been fantastic, you know, getting to know your personal journey up to this point, and then, you know, just also hearing about what's all going on in the in the women's game here at Chelsea. I think it's it's exciting for us. We've gotten to see it firsthand. Uh, we watched the amazing Champions League run um, last season, unfortunately, f- you know, falling. Um, but I think what our goal here is really just to get it out there and make sure we get as many of our fans, especially in America, where the majority of our listeners are, you know, aware of it and experience it. So uh, the good news is there is a lot of support out there in the United States. Uh, a lot of our listeners are excited about it. So, again, just thanks for sharing. Uh, we're so excited to kind of see this journey continue with the Chelsea women's team and all the successes you're definitely going to have this season. Thank you, guys. Hope we win some trophies this year for oh, you. I bet. I bet on it. So, again, thanks, Aaron, for your time. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. Yeah.